for this presentation today, what we're going to go through is how we help drive quality assurance through analytics, uh, both data collection from disparate sources, as well as speech analytics, and how can we help improve that overall quality assurance process, really. So that's what we're going to focus on, is our call and screen recording, right, how that leverages along with speech analytics and data analytics to drive quality assurance. Uh, we do have another, a, a number of other modules, but those aren't the focus for today. So really what I want to start talking about is I think a lot of I think this might look familiar to a lot of us, right? The traditional QA approach, this is very common in most environments. We often are targeting low value interactions for quality review. And really where we need to get to is on the outsides where we're actually targeting the high value interactions by leveraging tools that uh, can bring in data from other sources and allow you to do automation for targeting interactions that need review is really where you start to begin process improvement. And that's where a solution like BPI will really help with that. Uh, we integrate with any phone system that's out there, so your Avaya, your Cisco, your Mitel. Uh, the, the platform is, is not dependent on our environment. And really the goal is to deploy a solution that's going to help you to improve overall quality assurance in your organization and right, the ultimate goal, which is customer satisfaction. Traditional quality monitoring, again, low value. So how do we kind of break that down? And this is a, a good image, and I think we can all kind of, kind of feel that, uh, and it kind of looks like the guy from Top Gear, right, one of the main guys from Top Gear there, uh, with his, his stack of mail. And this is kind of what it's like when you're doing quality analysis and you're targeting low value interactions. You don't know what you're looking for. You don't have a lot of data to support finding an interaction that's really going to be of value to actually evaluate, right, and then provide feedback and coaching on. And we start to break that down by saying, let's take a look inside the envelope. And that's an important message, right, and I think we can all relate to that because we all get way too much mail. A lot of it's junk. Some of it's good. We want to keep that. And what we're trying to disseminate is of all the mail that we get or all the calls that we capture, in our environment, how do we break that down and actually make sense of it? Traditionally, in most cases, we know we've got some basic call data, right? So that's kind of that first layer on the envelope. We can, we can kind of look at that, and that, that's good, and that's traditionally been what most people have used to do their quality selection. I know that it was an inbound call, it had a duration of X, Y, and Z, and it was for agent Todd Smith. But again, that's not a high-value interaction. We don't know enough about that customer interaction to really say, I need to review this, or I need to assign this to someone to review. So we start to layer on additional data. If we get additional metadata from the telephony environment, that's great. But really where we start to see additional value is when we start to drive and add analytical information to the envelope, right, to the overall customer interaction. When we can start tapping into disparate sources, right, other business systems, let's say your CRM, your Salesforce, your SAP, your remedy ticketing systems, when we start to collect data from those systems and append it to the recorded interaction, now we can start to leverage that information to do intelligent precision monitoring. If I've got the customer ID, if I know what kind of product type, right, they did a billing inquiry, and then they called back into the second inquiry. I can start to string these pieces of information together and really target those interactions that I need to review for process improvement. Right? That's the goal here is how do we target and get down to the root of the issue. Uh, it's hard to do that in a traditional monitoring right, environment. We need to have additional data associated with those interactions. And then continuing to leverage on top of that is where we get into the speech and text analytics. Right? We have a robust speech environment that will allow us to process 100% of the audio calls through a speech engine, and we create that text and start to action up the interaction. And now look at our envelope. I haven't even opened the envelope. I haven't even started to listen to the call or do any kind of a review, and I have a lot of great information about it. I can categorize it. I can target it for quality evaluation. I could automatically distribute some coaching content or activities based on maybe a disposition that I collected from a CRM system, right? Outrageous price increase, speaking with the manager, all that information is very important. When we start to, to layer this on top of the interaction and paint that complete picture, we really can start to drive change by doing precision monitoring. 
our process workflow very much for anyone who's kind of into the whole Lean Six Sigma, right? The DMAIC process: define, measure, analyze, improve, control. Foundationally, that's at our core in our product. We take that approach in our design, development, and implementation. We need to properly find and assign interactions to be evaluated, right? For a good quality process. Once we have that, we want to make that readily available to the agent by putting it, strike that, readily available to the quality analyst or supervisor so they're not doing the hunting and pecking, which has been traditionally how QA is done. Let's intelligently find and assign the calls or the interactions to be evaluated. Once they're evaluated, let's automatically send coaching activities. And once the coaching is done, how do we complete that circle right, and finish our measure by reporting? We want to continue this cycle for continued process improvement, and that's what's key. Now I'm going to show it to you. My focus today for what I'm trying to show everyone is about the workflow of a quality analyst or a supervisor, someone who's responsible for QA. I want that person's job to be easy and efficient and effective, right? And by reducing the number of steps, by doing automation, we can take that step process down. Normally, a standard QA process will be seen eight to 10 steps just to start an evaluation. When we provide and add the automation to that, we can get down to maybe two or three steps and gain 50% efficiency for your quality analyst, either to increase the amount of QA that they do or to utilize that time in other areas. The life of the supervisor, the life of the QA analyst should be, I log into my performance optimization suite like I've done right now. And within this view, it automatically lands me on my quality to-do list. As an example, what everyone has seen here is this is a listing of all the evaluations that I have to complete today. This is me. This is Greg Cummings, right? I really don't have to do them, but I'm sure someone would like me to, and I, maybe I'll get to them later today. But these are the evaluations that are assigned to me to complete. I can see I've got the agent, right, the group that they belong to, the evaluation form that's been assigned, along with the indication that this was a scheduled task automatically by the system, using that intelligent business data that we've appended to the interaction. I want to show you what that looks like. Right? When I select the interaction, it loads up in my media player down here at the bottom. We give you a nice, clean presentation. Green bar is representative of the audio. Blue bar is representative of the video. Right? We've got our video recording. You can pop this out in a new window. We can make this nice and big. We can show it on a nice, clean screen. If you have a dual monitor, you drag it off to the other monitor, and you're watching the video and you're listening. We're going to get into the QA process in a second. The idea is we have our audio. We've got our video. I can look at the business data that was appended. I can see that we've attached the order value, the customer address, the quantity. I've got a PCI event, right, which is a sensitive indication where we might have processed a credit card payment, and we went ahead and scrubbed that information out, right, for any PCI compliance needs. We don't want to show that to anybody. But the actioning and adding of intelligent business data throughout the interaction allows us to automate the process for QA, and that is critical for all. Once I've got this interaction, I can simply, right, continue the evaluation. And because it's scheduled, I can launch into it. So I'm going to launch into this evaluation process. It's going to load my evaluation form. And what you're going to see is it gives me my evaluation form. It presents to be my media a nice, clean format. The picture looks really good. Right? I've got controls where I can toggle and flip-flop my audio and my video. And then I start to perform my evaluation. I start to answer my questions. We're all familiar with this process. Right? Did you greet the call with the standard greeting? Acknowledge the customer's initial request as you start to go through this process. If you take your eyes and move them to the right, you'll see where our scorecard is continuing to get updated right, with different point values. Now, one of the things I do want to point out as we go through this process, and this is not unfamiliar to the folks on the phone, right? This is a common practice for doing quality analysis, but really we're trying to drive automation. We've automatically scheduled this because we use it business intelligence to locate the interactions that are of high value. I, as the analyst, am doing the quality review. But what I ne necessarily don't know is that underlying certain questions can actually be actions that are automatically driven off of the way that I answer something. Let me show you an example. If agent verified account information at the question was answered as no, the system can automatically trigger an activity, a coaching activity, to be sent 
to the agent. And I'm going to show you how that works. In our form design process, and so on my same evaluation form, I'm just showing you now the edit view. I can actually dictate what actions are part of an individual question. I can have a simple right, email sent out. I can have a coaching activity, right, depending if they're at goal, below goal, how do I want to trigger an action. Right? It's really about taking the workflow, automating the workflow, and making sure that we're sending content immediately to the agents so we can have process improvement. We can couple this with our workforce management that will only allow the agent to take that activity when they're in a scheduled event. And that's also critical, right? Contact centers and workforce management, uh, they're going to want to make sure that agents are taking themselves off of the phones when they're going to go into an activity if it's an unscheduled event. So we tie that closely with, with our workforce management, our BPI foresight, uh, that allows us to say, you can only take these scheduled activities during specific periods that have been allocated to you during your day or week, whatever it might be. Building in automation to deliver coaching takes the guesswork out of the analyst having to do it or the supervisor having to do it. These are very process-driven right, questions procedurally. We want to send that feedback automatically. Now, along with that, if I didn't want or didn't have the automation built in, right from within my evaluation as I'm evaluating the agent, I still could have the ability to assign them a coaching activity manually. So you have manual capabilities as well as automation. Again, all things that are going to reduce the overall time it takes to compete, complete a quality review. We action up the interaction with good data. We need business data from systems. We need speech analytic data from processing the calls to a speech engine. We take all that information and build a customer interaction. And then using that data, we do an automated process to assign and schedule those to be reviewed. Once those are in the queue to be reviewed by your supervisors, right, your evaluators, whoever they might be, they're doing their evaluation process unbeknownst to them, most of the time, these questions are built with actions in the back end, right, through a very simple form design process that I showed you. As they create those actions, as the questions get answered and the evaluation forms are saved, those auto actions are automatically sent out to the agents. From a reporting perspective, right, how do we wrap this up? We've got good interactions. We found them, right? We use the intelligent business data. And then we assign those to be evaluated. They've been evaluated. We deliver coaching and feedback to the agents, right? Really, we wrap this up with robust reporting. In our VPI and Power Suite, we have a host of reporting capabilities. I've got a whole set of uh, what we refer to as evaluation instant analyzers, as well as a number of uh, tabular reporting capabilities. But I like to show these because these really highlight kind of the power and the ease of use of your reporting. A lot of us can get buried in, um, you know, analysis paralysis, right? That's one of those terms we hear a lot is, I've got so much data, how do I distill it down? How do I make it easy to consume and then drive change? We do that providing you multiple views. We have snapshot overall views, the group explorer view that I'm on right now to look and see how my teams are doing. I'm looking at evaluations for this month right, on a particular evaluation form and looking at agents or strike that average evaluation point score per page. Now I can see, and I'm going to scroll through here, let me look at Howard's team. There's a total of uh, 12 agents that were evaluated of the 16 evaluations per agent. Two were the fewest, five were the average, the most someone had eight, maybe a new hire on his team. Evaluation completion status, overall score range, I can see by page, and I can start to spot my outliers. Why is everyone having such a difficult time right, with this last category? We need to drill into that because I'm seeing that across the board, but I've identified it's a new process we've deployed, and people are having a tough time kind of adjusting to that. So we're going to do an impromptu training session, send out some messaging, and make sure that we try to get that up. Right? It's about understanding, analyzing your data, looking at it from different report views. Very robust reporting tool. I can go all the way down to the Agent Explorer view into the system right from a reporting perspective and it will show me the same reporting information, right? Build my nice graphical charts, uh, allows me to target at the agent level. Uh, I've got data explorer views. I've got evaluator explorer views where I can see how my evaluators are performing, right? I know that, you know, we've got some things that are backlogged and scheduled. How's Greg doing? Greg's not doing that good, right? 
Ethan's doing well. Emilio, Jessica needs a little, right? Where's her? Why is she behind in her evaluation? I can manage my agents. I can manage my evaluators. Analytical reporting information. Now, from the process for an agent, right, it's really important to understand how this information gets fed back to them. One of the things I'm going to bring up and highlight for you guys is what we refer to as our desktop ticker. Performance analytics are key in a lot of cases where we want to present that information, right, at the agent's level. Uh, an agent desktop ticker is going to pop up here in a second at the top of my screen, and this is really where we start to share information. As this starts to load, agents need to be informed, right? We've collected a lot of data, right? Speech analytics data from different sales systems, CRM systems. We want to put this information in front of agents and supervisors and managers and directors. We can create multiple real-time views into right, the performance management system and show that information. What is your talk times and your handle times, your sales, right? Calls in queue. But really what I wanted to show you here is from our quality review, right, because that's my target today, that's my focus, is quality analysis, right, doing good QA and getting the information out and doing process-driven change. I create a desktop ticker that allows the agent to see how they're performing as evaluations are done, direct links into my last QA that the agent can launch from here and start to review that evaluation that was performed, and then also launch right into their coaching activities that have been automatically assigned. We want to take as much of the guesswork out of it as possible. We do that through right, good quality analysis and review. The collection of the interactions and all the information that's relevant, data from disparate sources like your CRM systems, data from speech, automate the process using business rules to assign those to be evaluated, targeting those high value interactions, and then automatic coaching to be sent to the agent for process improvement. That was my focus for today. I want to thank you guys very much for allowing me to deliver this message and talk to you about quality assurance and analytics. Uh, it's something that's very close to my heart, and uh, I'd love to, to work with you guys in the future on, on some of these initiatives. So thank you very much.